have you been to Argentina? Yes, I went to the film festival six, yeah. seven, seven years ago. It was great. Yeah. Uh, were you attached when uh, supposedly was Tom Cruise on board? Originally, uh, yeah. Kurt Wimmer wrote a script called Edwin A. Salt, which was about a man. Mm -hmm. um, we thought about a number of uh, men who possibly could play the, the leading role, uh, Tom Cruise amongst them. Um, and then uh, um, Amy Pascal, the head of Sony Pictures, suggested Angelina Jolie. And I thought about it for about 10 seconds before realizing how, what a brilliant idea that was. Um, you know, because Angelina is such a, a skilled actress, and yet she's such so proficient at performing um, action scenes. So, you know, it was a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Since you're a, a better run of, of spy movies, what was your uh, newest approach in terms of this movie? Well, you know, uh, what appealed to me about this mm -hmm. screenplay was the fact that it dealt with something that I find really fascinating the concept of the sleeper spy, mm -hmm. the spy who's been trained to pretend that they are, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the friend of the country that, they, that, that they're spying on, to pretend that they are one of their, of their enemies. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's, that subject has always fascinated me um, since uh, stories of uh, Germans and Americans who had penetrated each other's country uh, during the Second World War and from the stories that my father told me uh, from his days as a, as a military spy during the Second World War. Um, so, you know, that's what I found interesting, the concept of the sleeper spy. Mm -hmm. What has changed in terms of the Cold War before and nowadays in terms of uh, the mole in, in the countries? Well, um, the only thing that's changed is that um, you know, in the old days, um, in the Cold War era, America was fighting an ideological battle mm -hmm. with the Soviet Union and Russia. Um, now the battle is not ideological, um, it's for power and influence um, and commerce. But the techniques of spying I don't think have changed at all. Mm -hmm. And what type of research do you do? Well, we. Um, interviewed a lot of people who had worked for the KGB in its heyday and a lot of people who had worked uh, for the CIA then and now to find out you know what it was like to be a clandestine operative mm -hmm. and also what might be the basis of what seemed at first to be a fantastic invention this idea that Russians are left over from the Cold War and are lying in wait in America to be awakened um, and what we found out was that it's true. And what we've seen here in America uh, in the last few months is that it's all come true. This fantastic uh, story is not a fantasy, it's real. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. How are you doing so far? I'm hanging in there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you like doing junkets? <laughs> <Is that a laughs> exhausting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it gets that way. Yeah. As, yeah I noticed you, you always, uh, uh, in, in movies with strong directors, like uh, Woody Allen, uh, uh, David Mamet, you know, the, and Philip Noyce now. Uh, would you, uh, were you attracted to the project, the, the script or the director for, it, for himself? Well, I mean, the, the, the thing is, it's always, um, uh, you know, it, they're all connected to each other, you know, mm -hmm. that, uh, that if a script is good, it attracts a good director. So then, um, and then actors come on board with that, you know, so one thing tends to follow the other. So um, I think the first thing really was a really good script. But then it was no surprise to me that Philip was, was uh, wanted to make the film. And then that was also a great thing for me because I'm a big fan of his work. So, uh, and I loved his work within, the, within this genre as well, with mm -hmm. um, Clear and Present Danger and Patriot Games and, uh, and uh, uh, the kind of CIA action genre. I just thought he had a really fluid and intelligent approach to that and, and there were great performances in those films, uh, mm -hmm. as well as being uh, just imminently watchable. 
And so I knew that there was going to be something quite special going on, and uh, and then a great cast, mm -hmm. you know. And again, you know, sort of one thing leads on to another. A really good script attracts a good director, and attracts a good uh, a good group of people to come together. So I, so with Angelina and uh, and Liev, I was very excited about joining that and making the kind of triangle. Yeah, you're a theatre guy. Yeah. So, but in America, you you go for genre movies. Why is that? Well, I I mean, I go for various different kinds mm -hmm. of films and. Uh, and different sorts of genres, actually. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, but I'm definitely somebody who likes to explore as much as I can. Um, different genres, different styles, different kind of sizes of films. Uh, and, uh, and I guess in America they make more big budget films. And if they're making big budget films all the time in England, I'd probably be doing some larger films there as well. But, uh, but it tends to be here that's centered around, around that, so, uh, or in, uh, in the States. So, I, uh, you know, I enjoy doing all sorts of different kinds of, kinds of movies. I feel, I feel that's a real privilege for me, and I like it. I always work with uh, Liev Schreiber because he's a very good actor, and you come from different backgrounds, so yeah. in terms of technique. Yeah, well, actually, we come mm. from a similar background. Mm. We're both uh, very, uh, we're both theater actors, really. And so um, we had a lot in common in terms of our, uh, in terms of some of the, the plays we'd done, mm -hmm. uh, some of the Shakespeare's we'd done. So we were able to like uh, immediately start to talk about that. And our approach, uh, in terms of, uh, we always approach it from the text first, you know, from the scripts and trying to understand these characters and what they mean. And then, and then later on, we do the rest of it and try and make, uh, trying to understand the physicality of the characters. So, um, so we were able to. So we were, in a in a way, quite similar. Even though most of his work would be based over in New York and me in London. Mm -hmm. Are you going to direct again? I hope so. I hope so. It depends on um, on the on the project and the specifics of that. But um, but certainly, uh, I would like to. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thanks. When I was a little, I had huge asthma, but now it's controlled with the inhaler. So yeah, we have that. With that I carry all, every, everywhere I go in, in case of. Yeah, no, we're yeah. the same, just in case. Yes. So that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice shirt. It's a great Ready, shirt. Rolling. Okay, so uh, in the last uh, few years, you've been uh, portraying strong female characters, whether it's genre films or whether it's uh, drama films. What, uh, what type of character do you draw, do we like more in terms of uh, genre or drama? Um, I think it depends. I, you know, I'm one of those people, I, I think when I do one thing, I want to do the other. So I think if I do something emotional like Changeling, um, which is very physic uh, emotionally draining, then I, I want to do something very physical. So you kind of switch back and forth. Once you've done one, you kind of miss the other. But this film, Salt, was, was very different in that it has a great deal of big, fun action scenes, but it's also very dramatic and has strong character. Uh, he, she has an, an interesting arc because I noticed that in the last few mo enough movies you, you did, there was a, a theme of uh, going against the system and mm -hmm. trying to, uh, how do you say, Settle your identity. You know, this is who That's am I. That's interesting. That's true. Yeah. yeah I so didn't realize that. You've you've made <laughs> me realize that. Uh, do you agree with that? Yeah, but I think uh, I didn't. I didn't. Subcon I didn't consciously know that. So you've discovered something. Well, <laughs> 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 and what was the pitch uh, uh, of feeling noise from doing this this movie? Well, Philip and I worked together ten years ago, and I know he's a great director, and he loves dra uh, drama, and ha he's great with actors. As, m and, but he's also very good at chase scenes and action so he seemed like the the perfect person um, and uh, we met and talked about it and it, it uh, as old friends it was an easy choice mm -hmm. and, and, and you do prefer now in in, 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 in terms of career going for Chandra or going or mixing a little bit of both or? I like mixing I've, I've yeah. always have and I've always been very grateful that I've been able to you know that I've had a career that's allowed me um, to do both mm -hmm. so. and we're going to talk about the, the sequel because he it's going to be a sequel? I don't want to talk about the we, movie. We <laughs> hope so. We don't, we don't know. If, if people yeah. like the first one, then maybe mm -hmm. there will be. But we don't have one. We don't have an idea for one. We'd have to start from the beginning. So maybe if people like the first one, they can tell us what they want in the second one. And then we can make what they want. Mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in, in your resume, in your character resume says it's Taekwondo at 16. So have you trained for Taekwondo? Did I? I, 
I didn't train for Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. I did kickboxing and, and uh, a little Muay Thai, mm -hmm. but not Taekwondo. And how is a, a choreography in terms of a female choreography, not a male choreography? For the fight, fight scenes? Yes. Um, it had to be very different because we had to use, if you notice, I go up on the walls a lot. Mm -hmm. We had to use um, my, that I could, was fast and I could move around because that's where I was strong, whereas a man is just physically bigger. So I couldn't be physically bigger but I could be faster and move around, things like that. You know, we had to find a way that make it real. How could she really do it, so. And it was hard for you? Um, it, was, it was hard, but it was fun. It was, it was good hard. Okay, you know. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Corte. Corte. The other years, yeah. they were very awful. I, I, I love we didn't qualify the others. I love Maradona, you know. I yeah. think I love his passion and like the, the, the big wet kisses mm -hmm. that he gives to every single one of his teammates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a character in himself. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really lovely and yeah, it's great. It's great. Okay, so uh, Aaron Sorkin said that this movie was about uh, loyalty and friendship. Can you dwell on that, please? I, I would absolutely agree with what Aaron said. <laughs> that. Uh, this, this movie is about loyalty and friendship and betrayal and power and greed and young people. And it's a very layered, uh, very rich story. Mm -hmm. and what do you think about it? Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. I think there's, there's, a, there's a great um, moral lesson that it could potentially teach. And I think uh, it's a cautionary tale. And I think he, Aaron put it very well. He said, um, uh, the, the, the epicenter of the movie is this character, Mark Zuckerberg, played you know, uh, to perfection by Jesse Eisenberg. And he, um, for the majority of the movie, he is the anti-hero. Mm -hmm. And then right at the end of the film, he, is, uh, he becomes or he, he evolves into a tragic hero. Mm -hmm. And I think that transition is, um, you know, it's, t it's timeless. You know, it's it, it, it's it's it. I feel like the, the the script that Aaron wrote. You know, it's it it, it goes it, it 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 lives amongst Greek tragedies and the Shakespearean tragedies, and um, you know, it's dealing with these universal themes. And I think to be involved in a film like that, it's it's a rare thing in in cinema, in 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 in, in American cinema mm. especially. You know. Uh, Justin, you, you've chosen uh, a strong characters to portray in films. I remember Alpha Dog. With and it was a very good character, and the for the scenes we've seen, the, you're a strong character as well here. So, so is it intentional you portray strong characters? Uh, I I uh, I feel like I've um, I feel like I've portrayed uh, I feel like I've been lucky to to play some some interesting characters in some of the films that I've done. Um, for instance, but but I also think in a film like uh, you know Black Snake Moan, I, I felt like. You know, my character was in, was incredibly fragile. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, uh, I I I like great stories and I like great characters and and uh, you know I just feel extremely extremely lucky to be a part of this one mm -hmm. uh, with such an amazing uh, cast and 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 uh, so, such a brilliant writer and brilliant brilliant director. So. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm lucky to be here. Okay. <laughs> uh, is it uh, David Fincher a perfectionist or is it an obsessive, compulsive uh, son of a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> you said that. Yeah. Uh, you said I, that. I, said, I said. I said it. We I said it. We, we, we I think. That at I all. no. I disagree with that latter part. I think definitely. there's a fine line. I think it's. I think that's in the eye of uh, sort of the beholder. Obsessive compulsion and perfectionism is. They're not far from 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 each other. I think that that I think that David is brilliant. I think he is a perfectionist, and I think he's brilliant and he's unapologetic about getting perfection. And and uh, I can't argue with that. I can't. I you know. I mean, I think it makes you want to give it to him. You know. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. You <laughs> Thank you. I said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you'll succeed. 
<laughs> where you're from in Argentina? Yeah, in Buenos Aires. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's my sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's a very geek t-shirt. <laughs> in this movie, uh, Justin Timberlake has the... Yeah, Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have it. The real life. <laughs> Did he see your shirt? Uh, yes. Oh, show yeah. him again. I like it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the, from the scenes uh, we've seen, uh, your character is, uh, is, is like a brilliant guy, but also a douchebag. So are you, <laughs> do you agree with that? Uh, of course not. Um, no. You know, my job as an actor is to uh, think my character is perfect. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have to uh, defend him 14 hours a day for 70 days for five months of shooting, you know. So yeah. uh, no, no. So I view uh, my character as, as, as brilliant and as a visionary. Um, and as a uh, uh, and as um, kind of uh, as 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 a very pure craftsman, he wanted to create this website um, in a very pure way, even um, in the face of turning down huge offers for lots of money. You know, he was so mm -hmm. intensely focused on creating the site in the way that he saw it. Mm -hmm. and, and do you think that money corrupts? Because. Uh it seems that when escalating, you know, the, the social network and then the social scale of uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, somewhere people yeah. that get mm -hmm. corrupted. Well, you know, I think I in the movie, money it's it's the it's the um, the kind of the uh, it's it's the valuation of Facebook as mm -hmm. you know that it, that it's valued so high and and um, that attracts a lot of people that corrupt. But I don't think money necessarily corrupts Mark Zuckerberg in the movie because um, I don't think Mark Zuckerberg ever really cared about the money. He, if he cared about the money, he would have been rich a lot earlier. But in the movie, Mark Zuckerberg is mo mo mostly focused on creating his vision, which is Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of portraying him, you portray a people who is uh, living, you, you almost contempor contemporary of yours, and yeah. you, you didn't meet him, so you didn't meet him. So how can you compose a character He's already alive, and you can reach him. Um, yeah, it's 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 um, it's unique, certainly. Uh, you know, Aaron Sorkin wrote this phenomenal screenplay, and so I was mainly working off this screenplay in terms of thinking about who this character is. But like you said, because he's real, uh, and because he's um, you know alive now, uh, um, there's a lot of video to look at, for example, online uh, to see how he moves and how he speaks, and that was very helpful. And you try to emulate his style or his, his mannerisms? A little bit. I mean, the truth is we don't have any videotape of Mark Zuckerberg at college because mm -hmm. no one was filming him thinking he's going to create the, you know, he's going to be <laughs> the youngest billionaire in the world. But um, there was, uh, but I certainly, it was very helpful to have that video. And, and David Fincher, he's a perfectionist or he's a, you know, a compulsive uh, son of a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he's the best. No, he's yeah. incredible. Um, you know, the movie is really tells this story from three different sides, from Mark Zuckerberg's point of view, from his best friend Eduardo Saverin's point of view, and from these uh, identical twin brothers who claim that, they, that Zuckerberg stole the idea mm -hmm. of Facebook from them. And, and the great thing that David Fincher did, w w you know, among, among many other things, was, was um, impress upon all of us that we were all right. You know, so that uh, when you watch the movie, it's really up to the audience to kind of figure out what they think is right. Mm -hmm. Okay.